Thanks. Students, families, counselors, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining StriveScan's virtual college exploration program. This program is in partnership with the college that changed lives through the next few days. And a few housekeeping items before I hand it over to our panelists. First and foremost, you're encouraged to ask questions throughout the session via the Q&A button that you see on the bottom of your screen. When you submit a question, it gets sent to our panelists, and they'll work to answer the question during the session and at the conclusion of the session. They may not get to every question, but they will receive a transcript of all those questions so they can follow with you afterward. As a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off so you, the panelists cannot see or hear you. So if you do have questions, send them in through that Q&A. This is one of 50 individual information sessions and panel presentations that are being run through the Colleges That Change Lives program. This runs through Tuesday night. We encourage you to go to strivescan.com slash virtual slash CTCL, the same place you went to register today to check out the rest of the programs and also to find those recordings. The, when you signed up today, you received a barcode. You do not need your barcode for this virtual program. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to my panelists from Beloit College. Thanks, Zach. Hello, uh, my name is Erin Guth. I'm the Director of Admissions at Beloit College, and we're really excited to have you joining us um, and learning a little bit more about my institution. I'm joined by my colleague, Ernan, and I'll have him introduce himself in a second, um, and he'll kick us off. So, Ernan. Thank you, Erin. Welcome, everyone. We're delighted that you're joining us. Uh, like Erin said, I work at Beloit College as an admissions counselor, but even more proudly, I'm an alum of a college who graduated just last year. And I know there are many of these sessions going around for colleges that change lives. So the question really is, what about Beloit or how is it that we, that we change your life? And it certainly did mine. So again, thanks for joining us. We're thrilled to have you and let us begin. So I think the, first, the best way to understand uh, Beloit is, is as a constellation of Beloiters. So it's people who are actors and athletes, they're sci-fi geeks and sorority sisters, they're activists and a cappella singers. So it's this really exciting combination of people who are spectacularly multi-interested and are mo much more than just a student. So if you're looking for a place where it really is about much more than just the academic experience and, and truly about you know, becoming a really confident, spectacular person that uh, just you know, has, has a variety of great interests. That's basically what in many ways defines Beloit. But of course, academics are very, very important. And so Beloit does have meaningful, tailored learning to you. And Beloit is a little over 1,100 students. They're purposeful, curious, intrepid, and brilliant students, like I mentioned before, students who are daring and bold and want to endeavor into a variety of disciplines and, and humanities. And those 1,000 plus students are split up in a few numbers that we're really proud to talk about. The first one is that 98% of our classes have fewer than 30 students. That's incredible. That's where the true magic happens, that connections with your professors that you're able to build a relationship with really make learning quite an experience. And it makes it very exciting to go to class every day, which you know, when you're choosing a college is probably gonna be a very important factor. Our student to faculty ratio is only 10 to one, meaning that for every 10 students, there's a professor that's there to help you. And again, it's all about that very personalized approach. And our average class size is only 15 students. So again, you know, some of your introductory classes might be a bit bigger, but that relationship with the professor, with your peers, that capacity for debate and conversation and really delving into the topic at hand is absolutely magical. And then by the time you're in your fourth year, for instance, like I was, you would have a class on Greek literature, even though you're an economics major with only six other peers. And that's absolutely incredible. So Beloit World Class Academics really allow you to get both the breadth and the depth to create you know, really excellent world ready graduates, like I mentioned before. And you do all of this through an interdisciplinary lens, which I think is quite powerful. And one of the things I love the most about Beloit and the reason why I uh, want to provide this opportunity for other students like it was provided for me is because at Beloit I always felt like I never had to sacrifice my passions in pursuit for some sort of academic or more profitable career. So I never had to sacrifice my passion and I still was able to do what I wanted, what I loved learning about and to do so with guidance, with personalized uh, interactions with my professors and with mentors all around. 
And all of that in many ways has actually been condensed in our Beloit Action Plan, which Erin is gonna talk about. Thanks, Hernan. Um, so the past six months for many institutions and many people in general has been really challenging under COVID. Um, and you know, Beloit in itself recognizes a lot of those challenges and has been looking at ways um, really to be innovative um, and to, to take this current climate, this sort of unpredictability that we're in right now, and really kind of, kind of rise above it. Um, and so back in March, Beloit released something we called the Beloit Action Plan. Um, why I feel like it's important to this presentation is the fact that it really kind of speaks to sort of the history, the leadership, and the innovation that Beloit um, is really sort of setting forth um, as we are, are moving into so much change. Um, and so it's a, it, it really is a plan designed to create an education that works for everyone, no matter your situation. Um, the Beloit Action Plan is actually made of sort of five different programs of which uh, I think the biggest to highlight um, are, are um, I'm going to go a little bit out of order of these bubbles, but um, our mentorship routes. So our uh, AMP program, uh, which is our advanced mentor program, is a uh, program design that once a student is accepted into Beloit, they're already starting to get involved in the advanced mentor program. 72 hours after a student deposits from Beloit, uh, they will be matched with their first advisor on campus. So whether you're depositing and choosing to come to Beloit in January or May, you're already starting to make that connection um, to campus before that fall semester. So that faculty member is going to start getting to know you as a student, who you are, what you're passionate about, start having conversations about your future, um, start engaging you in different things that are happening at the college. Um, and this is such an influential experience to who Beloit actually is. Um, that it is really, we're a, a school about um, being sort of a student driven experience um, and throughout that process you're going to be mentored and so the first step is that is really this AMP program or advising mentor program um, and in this program it's designed to be a two-year program and the first part of that program is really going to be um, this level of just sort of introducing you to college, engaging you into the different aspects of being successful in college, but also teaching you skill sets um, that, are, that are both professional and personal beyond sort of the classroom. And so there'll be different training aspects. It'll be, you know, things like learning how to um, manage a email account or a Google calendar and some of these things that are gonna be relevant to a student year round. Um, after the sort of two-year program of AMP, you have a required first year and, a, and a, a, you can um, select to do a second year. But the other sort of aspect of the mentorship over the four-year experience at Beloit is something where that's very new to us that we've released in fall, 20, or fall 2020 called our career channels. So this is that next level advising and mentoring. A student can enter a career channel at any time. Um, so they can enter it in their first year, they can enter it into their fourth year. But it's designed, it's a program designed to connect students to their fields, really sort of taking what they're learning in the classroom and being able to apply that outside of the classroom. So they might be doing that through professional networks and meeting one-on-one -on -one with Beloit College alumni or community members to really get a sense of the fields they're interested in, the careers. How do you get from a degree at Beloit to that end goal that you, that you wanna achieve? What kind of schooling does it take? And so there's all these aspects of the career development that are really coming out. Um, we are building different channels and so examples of some of the channels that we have to offer are like business and entrepreneurship, the arts, 
justice and rights, sustainability, and they'll continue to develop in the years to come. Um, but they're both meant to be broad based uh, channels so that a student could fall in one channel, they could fall into four channels, but really give them the opportunity to take their education to a professional level outside of the classroom. Uh, and so, you know, we're really excited about the development of this program. Um, students will be able to um, attend lectures, be part of professional groups, and really understand how they take their education from learning the concepts and text to actual application. And it's really the, the fundamentals of a Beloit education um, is how to be sort of hands on and really be able to visualize and continue to move through your education in that sense. Um, another aspect of um, the, the Beloit Action Plan um, is our innovative step forward this year in creating something called the module schedule. Um, we recognized very early on in COVID um, that a standard schedule was not um, the most ideal for a student for mental health, um, that taking four classes at one time, trying to keep the same schedule, really, you know, our students were struggling with that and they needed something different. And our faculty had actually been having this conversation for quite some time and so felt like this was the best time to come out with a very innovative approach. And so we're moving for the year 2021 and maybe beyond to what we call a module schedule. It is a, we're splitting the semester into what we call two mods, um, mod one and mod two. Um, students will take up to two classes, um, which is one unit each in each module, allowing them more flexibility in the work that they're doing, um, really being able to learn in very different ways. So there might be opportunities for more field experience, more travel. Um, our courses this, this next year will be taught in an online hybrid or in-person fashion so students can have that flexibility to choose from um, but it's really going to be a way that students can spend a little bit more time and more focus in one or two classes at a time versus four and so really our faculty are very excited about this program and um, really just I think demonstrates the leadership and innovation that Beloit is continuing to use moving forward. Um, Another um, staple of our Boy Action Plan um, is our Midwest Flagship Match Program. Um, this is a new program we released again in March um, that guarantees that we'll meet the in-state tuition um, of the public flagship university in the Midwest states of Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Minnesota. Um, so we are guaranteeing that um, we will meet that in-state price. Um, it's been a, you know, often people struggle with the idea of private education. We know that we have a strong education to offer and will produce great graduates we just want to make it affordable for our students and so we've come out with this great program that we're very excited about to share um, and the final step of our our Beloit action plan is really our Beloit promise and so this this just steps back to um, we know students and families are investing a lot into this education times are different under COVID and so we want to be part of a community that is really sort of investing in our students and making sure that students um, are, who are at Beloit are able to stay at Beloit. And so doing everything we can. So there's a level of, of financial security there um, with a new program that we just released um, last week. Um, we are doing, for anybody enrolled in this next academic year, we'll be doing um, a ninth and tenth sem up to a ninth and tenth semester um, free. We know that a lot of students this fall are missing out on that in-person opportunity or 
in not being able to come to our campus. And so we wanna make sure they have that opportunity. Same with athletes who might be missing fall sports, they'll have that opportunity to play that fall sport later on. Um, but also this, the Beloit Promise will come with opportunities uh, around sort of the financial piece as well at Beloit. Um, we did not end up um, charging tuition increases to our students this next academic year um, and offer a wide variety of financial sort of planning around it. So um, being able to do deferral um, payments and working one-on-one -on -one with our students based off of their situation. Um, so we really want to make sure that Beloit is really being able to invest in those students and go through that program. And so the Beloit Action Plan really, I think, highlights um, once again, sort of that leadership, that innovation that Beloit is, is really showing in a, in a time of uncertainty um, that I think is really leading us into a very strong future. Absolutely. And I see that a few questions have come in, Erin. And although we'd like to take most of the questions towards the end of the presentation, I want to ask these ones because they're relevant to everything you just spoke. Yeah. So the first one comes from Grace asking if the mod schedule will be in place for 2021 and beyond. Is this a permanent change or is this experimental? Uh, that's a great question uh, to be to be determined. Um, so the faculty have actually been working on a program um, had been kind of proposing a program like the mod schedule for a couple years. Um, so they're sort of working out what a mod schedule would look like. Um, and so it hadn't fully been passed when they were, were looking at it, but under the current circumstances, we really felt like this was a good time to implement it and try it. So instead of just doing it for the fall semester, we actually implemented it for the full academic year. Um, so we're gonna see how it goes. Um, and I think if we have great success with it um, over this next academic year, that we'll see this as being sort of how Beloit moves forward. Um, and if we find out in this fall that maybe it's not the right schedule, then we may go back to sort of that regular um, semester breakdown schedule. Great question. Yeah, so great. And I think it shows the adaptability of Beloit. If it works, we'll continue it. If it doesn't, we can pivot into a different direction. The same student is asking, just to make sure, they're from Minnesota. Will my cost to go to Beloit truly be comparable to the price of attending U of M? It will. Um, so the match is tuition and fees. Um, so the difference may be the room and board piece, but we are guaranteeing that if you are admitted into Beloit over this next academic year, that we will match. Um, so you will, you'll be reviewed for scholarships um, at Beloit, but on top of scholarships, we'll make sure that that tuition and aid, tuition and aid amount will match what that in-site flagship is. Great. And the last one regarding the Midwest flagship match is, does this apply to out-of-state students? I'm guessing out-of-state meaning out of Wisconsin. And yeah, the answer is yes. Right. Yes. Yes. The, the Midwest flagship program um, is designed to, so at the, the tuition and aid that you will, we will match will be of the state that you are in. So if you're a Wisconsin resident, it'll be the University of Wisconsin-Madison. If you are in Michigan, it's the University of Wisconsin, Michigan, and so on. Um, and so you need to be a resident of that state to have that match. Great. And uh, just to, to provide some peace of mind as well, the Midwest flagship match is not going anywhere for a few years. So if you're going to be applying in the fall of 2022, yes, it'll still apply. And another question just lastly, is that are there any plans on adding Ohio to the Midwest flagship match program? That's a great determined? question. Uh, we're getting asked that a lot. Um, so we've just, this is a brand new program. It's only, it's only six months old. We did implement it um, with our fall 2021 our fall 2020 and now um, introducing it to our fall 2021 class. Um, so I don't know, uh, you know, if we, if we're seeing this as a popular program, there's, there's a chance that we could be looking to add other states in the future. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Erin.
So beyond those spectacular academics, what Beloit also has going for it is that it has a community like no other, truly. It is a college that feels like home and is why uh, about 20% of those thousand students represent international students from all over the world. So not only do you have a global community, but you have a community that people have chosen to come to from as far as Nepal and Cambodia, from Ecuador, from our very own city here of Beloit. So it, it really is a college that is home to all. And in many ways, it's a powerhouse of a college. And the way I describe it that way is because of our actually newest building on campus, which I think represents all the greatest things about Beloit. It's a building that in many ways encompasses uh, all, all the great aspects about athleticism, about academics, about innovation, about student-centered experience. And that's because Beloit's campus, being student-centered, is very much designed for you, the student. It was designed for me. I felt like I had all the resources necessary uh, to, to succeed at Beloit, both academically and in my, in my social and personal life. So the powerhouse, this nearly $40 million project, was actually a coal-powered factory that we've turned into this really unique, modern, but also industrial building that you see the rendering of in, in the presentation here on your screens. And it has, you know, because it's also an athletic center, it has a field house, it has batting cages, a new gym, a suspended track on the second floor, which is unlike anything I've ever seen, but it also has an auditorium. It has club hubs for the 60 plus student run clubs that we have on campus. Uh, the new pool, it has a, a new event space, truly a, a fantastic place. And, and so it's, it's, I think, something that shows the, the power of, of Beloit uh, quite well. In addition to that, Beloit is a D3 school with 18 varsity teams. So if you're interested in playing athletics at a D3 level where the student athlete component really balances itself out really well, you're able to do so at Beloit, whether that's softball or baseball or football or soccer. I'm not going to list them all, but if you're an athlete who's looking to take their you know, athletic career to the next level, in D3 and being a successful student at the same time, you're able to do so at Beloit. Another highlight of Beloit is our museums. For a relatively small campus as Beloit is, to have two teaching museums is an actual, you know, an absolute gem. And we have the Logan Museum of Anthropology, who's the best undergraduate museum in anthropology of its kind anywhere in the country with nearly 400,000 artifacts and a museum of art. So whether or not you know what anthropology is, doesn't really matter because of the fact is that we have that resource. And I didn't know what anthropology was truly before coming to Beloit, but as an economic student, I decided to you know, uh, try out uh, an anthropology course and it ended up being really, really, really amazing because we have those resources and as well as the Wright Museum of Art where art students are able to display their art as seniors and to really know how to curate exhibits and, and learn kind of the museum aspect of it as well. Another amazing resource that highlights uh, Beloit's commitment to kind of entrepreneurship and innovation is CELEB, which is the Center for Entrepreneurship and Liberal Education at Beloit. This is kind of a, a complicated space to describe because it has so many things and tools for students. So it has a recording studio, it has a TV station for our media studies students or for anyone for that matter if you're interested in it. It has a maker lab, which is all things, you know, kind of gadget making and for those students who are really handy and are able to create things with laser cutters and 3D printers and sewing machines of all kinds and all that stuff. And there's office spaces. It's really a place where you can truly consider starting your own business or considering you know, self-employment as an option in the future where you want to be your own boss. You want to create whatever it is you're passionate about. And like I mentioned earlier, we do have a global population uh, with nearly 20% of our students being international. You're going to be subjected to this plethora of cultures, countries, peoples, ideas, and that's invaluable. That's something that is incredibly, uh, you know, embedded into the Beloit College fabric. And not only is the population global, but our opportunities are global as well. And that comes in the form of phenomenal study abroad program where a great number of our students choose to study in more than 60 countries all over the world. Again, as far as you can imagine, my friends going to Spain, to Uganda, to New Zealand, all with different interests, all with different majors, all with different goals, we're able to really go out there and explore the world in a meaningful character forming way. So that's something that I absolutely love about Beloit, the ability to create all of these 
phenomenal spaces for students beyond just the classroom because as important and as, as special that the classroom is in, in Beloit, uh, what happens out of it and the experiences that you gain from the outside are just as important as well. So that's kind of the, the community and the home that so many of us have, have chosen. And now a bit more of a technical aspect and how the future awaits for those who are interested in, in pursuing you know, a, a path towards Beloit College like I did. Take it away, Erin. Thanks, Hernan. Um, so let's talk a little bit about sort of the logistical aspect. Um, you've heard a bit about Beloit now, about our academics, about the social and experience at Beloit, a little bit about sort of its innovation and how it's planning to move forward. So what's our application process? Um, so we have a pretty straightforward application process. Um, we are a Common App um, school. If you're not familiar with Common Application, it is a online application um, that a few hundred schools belong to. And so the nice thing is if you you know, are applying to multiple schools that accept the Common App, you only actually have to complete one application and that application can be sent to multiple schools. And then we also have our own Beloit College application. Um, in the application requirements, we require um, a school report um, with your high school transcript. That's typically always sent by like your counselor. Um, we have one teacher recommendation requirement. Um, you can submit more if you if you have them. I would say typically um, no more than than three is is good, um, but we only require that you have one. And the best news of all, we are test optional. Um, so Beloit College has actually been test optional for our, uh, this is going on our fifth admission cycle. Um, and the reason that we are test optional is that it's, um, it just doesn't align um, with what a Beloit education actually is. We're not a school that you're going to come to and find that you're taking a lot of tests and exams um, and standardized tests in your classes. That a lot of our classrooms are going to be a lot more sort of research intensive, writing intensive, um, and we just didn't feel like the standardized tests really were overall, they didn't have much predictive value in whether or not a student was going to be successful at Beloit. And so, you know, that is why we chose to be test optional. Um, and so if you've taken it and would like to submit it, you know, we're looking at the application process and sort of telling your story. And if you feel like your test is a good piece of telling that story, by all means, submit it. Um, but we know that this is a difficult year when it comes to tests. And so know that um, it's, it's optional for us. We don't use um, testing in any of our scholarship awarding. Um, so we do review students for merit-based scholarships in the application process and test scores are not involved in that process. So mentions merit scholarships. Um, Beloit has a, you know, really good reputation for having a strong sort of scholarship and financial aid program. Um, we have merit-based scholarships that go up to, and in this past year have gone up to about 36,000 per year. Um, so really hefty merit-based scholarships. Um, we do have some additional scholarships, like for instance, we have a music scholarship um, that can be up to $5,000 a year. Um, and you don't even have to be a music major to get the scholarship. You know, we want students who are looking at Beloit who have a passion for interest that may not be in the major that you're choosing. And so, you know, if you have a passion for music and you still want to sort of pursue it on the side, but maybe not focus on that, um, you know, you can apply for a music-based scholarship. Um, we also have a study abroad scholarship. So if you have been part of uh, you know, a Rotary International program or youth exchange program um, or spent a significant time sort of abroad in your education. Um, you can write an essay, submit it to us to be considered for a study abroad um, scholarship. Um, and we also have, you know, if you know a Beloit College alum, um, we have a Beloit College referral program. So have that Beloit alum um, send us your information and you could be eligible for a referral scholarship that way too. Um, in the financial aid process, um, 
you do have the ability to be eligible for campus employment or federal work study. Um, we award this to all of our students who attend Beloit. We want to have that opportunity for you to gain employment on your cam on campus. You can earn up to two thousand dollars a year um, through this program, and so it's a you know we we really see the student the campus employment piece is really important. Um, as, as I talked about sort of the career channels, there will be a lot more integration that we'll be seeing over the next future years um, with campus employment and sort of these different uh, channels. And so being able to really apply that knowledge in the classroom from your major to a job on campus is really what we're excited about. Um, but you can see it's clear that um, we have a strong financial aid program. Our average attendance is about 19,000 um, with our overall cost of attendance being 65,000. So we have a really robust financial aid program for our students. And the biggest of all, um, you know, we know that college education can be expensive and we feel really um, proud that a Beloit, we feel that Beloit education is worth, is definitely worth that value. You can see from some of the statistics here um, that our students are, are gaining um, employment not long after graduation. They feel like their education has been really beneficial. Um, they've developed, developed strong mentors and we expect this number to continue to sort of grow over the years as we've developed a much more robust mentorship program um, that our students are often going on to graduate schools um, and some of the top graduate schools in the country within their majors. Um, so, you, you know, we feel very proud of the education that we offer, the courses that we offer, um, and know that we see that in our students and, and how they're sort of returning to Beloit and helping, helping. And so, um, yeah, a little bit about our graduate. And so with that, um, here is the contact information for both Arnon and I, um, where we represent um, both international student enrollment, um, but also oversee uh, our West Coast. Um, I uh, recruit um, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories, um, and international students. And Arnon, you want to talk a little bit about your territory? Yes, I look over California students, uh, Arizona students, and New Mexico students, as well as many other countries around the world. But we are here to help you regardless of wherever you're joining us, wherever you're from. We'd be happy to answer your questions, shoot us an email, shoot us a text. We'd be happy to answer every and all questions. And speaking of questions, send them our way now. This is a Q&A portion. We're going to leave our contact information there for the remainder of the presentation, but there's a few already that have been asked. Um, one of them is, do we accept AP? Uh, so I'm guessing we can talk a little bit about our, our credit policy. Yeah, we do accept AP. Um, students who take AP exams and score four or five um, can get and earn college credit and placement at Beloit College. Um, for students in the IB program, we don't require that you have to get the diploma for college credit. Um, we award college credit at both the SL and HL level. Um, so if you score a six or seven in your SLs or a four through seven in your HLs, you can also get college credit and placement. Um, for many students, uh, we're seeing a lot more in recent years of students doing early college or dual enrollment. There's opportunities to transfer that credit in. And so if you're sending in sort of that college transcript with your um, application, um, we will do a credit evaluation for you. So you'll actually see that um, after you've been accepted of, you know, how your credit will transfer and how that'll come into Beloit. Absolutely. Another question asks that the Common App that has a section for an external, external art supplement. Can you talk more about that and is that recommended? Sure. Um, so it does have an external art a supplement. Um, we actually at Beloit do not accept um, the external art supplement um, through the Common App as we're not, you was, I, was, I would say you see that a lot more with a lot of like big art in art 
programs or art institutions with that requirement. Um, for us, if you do have an art supplement, we'd love to see it. Our, and you are looking to major in our, our art department would love to see that. Um, when you apply to Beloit, um, you will actually get login information for your own application portal at Beloit. Um, within that portal, we do have a portfolio section where you will be able to upload any additional works that you would like us to see. So whether um, you have artwork, whether that's photography or, you know, pictures of your paintings, you can write, bring that in. Um, you have, you know, music, um, like videos and things that you'd like to put, you can send those to us, writing samples. Um, anything that you send us um, and add to your portfolio, we can actually upload, we'll upload and be reviewing with your application. Right. Are we need blind in admissions, Erin? Uh, we are, yes and no. Um, so um, we are um, need blind and in the domestic admissions process. Um, and so we are not looking at your financial aid when we're making admission decisions. We're only looking at your academic information when we're making decisions. For international students, we are need aware. Um, and so with students who are, international students who are applying to Beloit, that we do require that they submit an international student financial aid application um, or a declaration of finance information with their, at the time of application. Great. I'm gonna take this next one, which asks us to talk a little bit about our location and surrounding community. That's a great question. It's actually something that we didn't really touch upon. We were so focused on our own college that we, we failed to mention some of the greatness that uh, lives outside of campus. So Beloit is located in the state line area of South Wisconsin with Illinois. Um, we are a city of 37,000 people, more or less, and we are close to both Madison, Milwaukee, and Chicago, largest cities, with put, which puts us at a bit of a really interesting intersection where we have some of those great opportunities within the city, yes, but also within the more metropolitan areas close to Beloit as well. Um, the surrounding communities are absolutely lovely. We have a fantastic downtown where, uh, while I was a student and still to this day, frequently go to enjoy some of the great restaurants, grab a coffee to study for students. And we actually have two buildings downtown. So the, so the Center for Entrepreneurship that I was talking about, for instance, is located downtown, which puts us in closer proximity to some of those business and entrepreneurial opportunities that I was talking about and our Center for the Arts. So for dance students, music students, some theater courses are taught there. So it's absolutely lovely. Uh, we have a river crossing through the city. It's a river that we now have direct access to via the powerhouse. But more than that, actually, a group of students gathered and created a boathouse about a mile, a mile north of campus. And you can grab a kayak, a canoe when the weather's lovely and you go up and down the river as you please. And overall, some of the nicest people I've ever met. I'm telling you this from my own experience because I came as an international student to Beloit and I have never felt more welcome in an area of the United States than in the Midwest and specifically in Wisconsin and even more specifically at Beloit. Uh, so that's kind of the, the surrounding area a little bit. Um, in, in, on, do you wanna talk a little bit about um, what housing is what housing and dining are like as yes. a student who's gone through the experience absolutely so housing is fantastic here at beloit you know that's kind of the quintessential college experience you live two doors down from one of some of your best friends most uh dormitories are doubles so you get a great roommate uh to you know learn to live with someone else which again is kind of the quintessential college experience it's really great uh Dining is, is also lovely because the three different dining options that we have on campus offer a, a wide variety. If you have any sort of uh, dietary restriction or any allergies or any sort, sort of cultural food preferences, the chef does their very best to actually meet all of those. And it's great because you're able to uh, not only enjoy dinner time with your friends, but do so in different spaces with different types of food. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Beloit also has a system that as you go into your third and fourth year, there's a possibility of apartment style living, which gives you a, a really nice space here on your third and fourth year. Not that the first two years aren't nice at all. I, I actually had some of my best memories and, and rooms on my first two years at Beloit. 
But yeah, I mean, you can go into our website, look at the residential life site, and you see some of the pictures of the building, some of the really great spaces that students tend to, to occupy. And so dining is part of that as well. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of other questions. We'll try to get through them. Uh, if not, again, you can send us an email, but we'll, we'll continue on here. Do we require an, an additional language? for, you know, throughout high school, uh, I'm guessing, yeah, is the question, should a student take an additional language and how many years of an additional language should a student think of taking? Yeah. Um, in the application process, we're typically looking for students um, who have taken a language um, and usually about two years is what we're looking for. Um, and, you know, it's not the be all end all if you don't have that. But we do find that it's helpful um, in, in sort of looking at the light because we're looking for students who, who have some of that interest in, in sort of internet intercultural um, aspects. And so we don't actually have a language requirement at Beloit. So you don't necessarily have to take it in college um, unless it's part of an actual major. Many students tend to do it anyways. We offer a wide variety of languages taught on our campus. Um, and we have a few faculty member who are really good at pulling people into their languages, um, even if they were a language you didn't think so. So Chinese, Japanese, Spanish, French, um, some intro level Russian courses um, are all part of uh, in our, our language program. Or if you're a weirdo like me, you can take some Latin and Greek where uh, actually our, our smallest class of the last two years was an advanced Greek course where only two students met with the professor. So talk about devotion. You got it right there. Uh, a couple other that I'll tackle real quick. How many students participate in Greek life at Beloit? Beloit does have Greek life. Around 20% of our students participate in it. The answer to, you know, to how important that is, is um, however important you want to make it. There's three fraternities, three sororities. If you want to become president of your uh, organization, if you want to become part of the executive team, if you want to become part of the program planner, you can do it. If you don't want to belong to any fraternity or sorority at all, don't. And all Beloit College students are so involved in so many things that you'll never feel like you're left out of an experience just because you don't participate in it. But if you do participate in it, then all the better. You know, it's a really great group of um, you know people that gather, and it's all about camaraderie. It's it's not about kind of some of those crazy stereotypical things that I certainly saw in movies before coming to the states. So it's definitely a nice, a nice Greek life at Beloit. And can non-majors participate in dance? The answer is yes. Non-majors can participate in dance. Non-majors can participate in theater. Pretty much anyone who has a desire and a passion to pursue what it is that they want to pursue, they can participate in some of our dance numbers. They can participate in different programs, different um, you know, productions, performances of all kind. And that's actually one of the liveliest scenes at Beloit. So you can definitely do that. Um, a little bit back to the city of Beloit. Uh, it is very walkable, yes, or do students need a car? If you want a car, feel free to bring it. If you don't, you're not missing out on anything because pretty much everywhere you wanna go to is within a walking distance. I never had a car for my four years as a student at Beloit. And I, I was able to, to really just go about and um, go downtown, explore different areas, go to beautiful different parks, all of those, all of those great, great spaces uh, that are within the city you can absolutely walk through. Um, a few other questions around that. We have just a few minutes left. Um, Another question, do we have an honors program? Um, the answer to that is no. Um, we don't have a specific honors program. And the reason for that is that we, we like to think that our academic experience at Beloit is an honors-based program. I mean, we, are looking, we were looking for strong students in the application process. Um, much of our education at Beloit is designed to be very rigorous, very writing intensive. And so um, we don't have a specific honors track. Um, we do have um, honors lines that you can do within a department. And so you can, you can actually earn departmental honors um, by doing um, additional work within your major um, in order to do that. Absolutely. 
A quick question that's specific to just one person, but can we talk about the education major? It's actually one of our most popular majors called the Education and Youth Studies. Uh, at Beloit, you get uh, certification after completing that major if you graduate from Beloit with an education major. And for instance, I, you know, you can do more research about this, but one of the introductory classes is called the Historical and Philosophical Perspectives in Education. So if that seems uh, interesting to you, then by all means, you know, do some more research on our really popular and, and really phenomenal education major uh, as well. Quick question, if we offer robotics coursework, we do offer some robotics coursework out of our physics program um, and some of our physics and computer science programs through some of our and some of it's taught i think even with our cognitive science program yes. so um yeah. there's definitely that opportunity to take some robotics courses at beloit yeah actually um, one of those classes makes you build your own robot which is great yeah um, so we're about at time. I just want to thank you all for being part of our presentation. I also want to let you know um, to check out the Beloit College um, website. It's beloit.edu. Um, if you check out the admissions pages, you can see all other opportunities to connect with Beloit. Um, we do offer on campus, some on-campus visits currently, um, at one family at a time, two, day, two times a day, um, five days a week. Um, so if you're in the Midwest or will be traveling to the Midwest, we'd love to have you. Um, we will also offer a variety of uh, virtual opportunities, um, including a live stream campus tour that we offer a couple times a week. Um, and if you'd like to find out who your admissions counselor is, if you don't necessarily fall into one of our um, territories, we're happy to help, but you can find out your admissions counselor on our contact us page and you have the ability to schedule a one on one chat with your admissions counselor. All right. Thank you so much for sharing this information and students and counselors. Thank you for tuning in. As you close this box, a very quick four question survey will appear. We do ask for your feedback on this session. We encourage you to check out the rest of the programming for CTCL, which runs through Tuesday evening. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks.